So welcome back to the session. So today we are going to discuss about MCQ questions based on DNA structure and Watson and Crick model and also about the replication of the DNA. So the first question is about in a DNA molecule. Okay, let's read the options first. The proportion of adenine in relation to thymine varies with the organism. So A will always be equal to T. Okay, so it will be always equal in all the organism. It is not going to vary. Okay, so now the option A is wrong. Fine, let's see the B option. There are two stands which run antiparallel. Okay, fine, that is antiparallel. One in 5 dash to 3 dash direction and the other in 3 dash to 5 dash direction. Yes, so we know the structure of DNA, right? So always. One stand will be from 5 dash to 3 dash and 3 dash to 5 dash. Okay, let's see the option B is right. We'll go to the option C. The total amount of purine nucleotides and pyrimidine nucleotide is not always equal. Actually, always this purine nucleotides and pyrimidine nucleotides will be equal. So, the option C is also wrong. Fine. The next final option. There are two stars which run parallel. So this itself it's a rock. Right? Always it is going to be the antiparallel. So the correct option is B. Let's see the next question. Antiparallel stands of a DNA molecule means that. Okay. So the option A. One stand turns clockwise. No, it is not going to turn somewhere like clockwise or anti-clockwise. So A and B is wrong. Okay. The phosphate, let's see the option C. The phosphate group of two DNA stands and their ends say share the same position. No, it is not going to share the same position, right? So for example, if we see the structure of the DNA, this is 5 dash to 3 dash and 3 dash to 5 dash. So in this phi dash end, there will be the phosphate group, obviously, right? So, but in the next stand, I mean, at the other end, there will be the free OH group, okay? It will be same like in this phi dash stand, phosphate group will be free and here OH will be free. So, the option C is also wrong. Let's see the final option. The phosphate groups at the start of two DNA stands are in opposite position. Yes. So, the option D is the correct. So, the question number 3. The net electric charge on DNA and histone is. Okay. So, the thing is, we have read about the DNA, right? Like, it is a genetic material. We know that. So, we know what is chromatin, right? So, when this chromatin is get condensed, then it is going to form the chromosomes. Fine. So, there is a thing called condensation. Okay. What is going to happen in this condensation? Consider this is a DNA. Okay. So, this is a DNA. Fine. So, in between the DNA, so there is a protein called histones. Okay. So, this is the histones and this is the DNA. Fine. Let me draw here. So, for example, this is the histone. Actually, this DNA is packed like this. Okay. So, this histone is used for the packaging of the DNA. That's why we are telling this our DNA is condensed. That is, chromosome is, is condensed. Okay. So, actually, this DNA is negatively charged. Because the phosphate backbone of DNA is negatively charged, which is due to the presence of bonds, you know, created between the phosphate and oxygen atoms. So, this DNA is negatively charged. So, coming to the histones, this is positively charged. Because this histone is a protein actually, which is very rich in lysine and arginine, which is an amino acid. That is lysine. And arginine. 
So this two are the amino acids. These are positively charged. That's why the histone protein is positive charged. Okay. So DNA is negative because of the phosphate and histone is positive because of this amino acids, right? Lies in an arginine. Okay. Let's see the option. The option A is both positive no and then both negative no and let's see the option C negative. So which is respectively. So DNA is negative and histone is positive. So D is zero. So the correct option is C. So the next question is in some viruses, DNA is synthesized by using RNA as template. Such DNA are called. So actually there is a process called reverse transcription. So we know that from the DNA, mRNA is produced and then protein is formed. Okay. So when this RNA is produced in some viruses, this mRNA is capable to make the DNA. Okay, because of the enzyme called its reverse transcriptase. Okay, that process is called reverse transcription. Okay, so when a DNA is formed by the RNA, then it is called as a complementary DNA, which is also called as cDNA. Okay, now in this question, the correct option is C. So that is cDNA, which is also called as a complementary DNA. Let's move to the next question. While analyzing the DNA of an organism, a total number of 5,386 nucleotides were found. Okay, out of which the proportion of different bases were, okay, let's write this here, that is adenine 29%, guanine 17%, Cytosine 32% and thymine 17%. Okay, considering the Chergaff's rule, it can be concluded that. Okay, so let's read the options once. So the option A is it is a double standard circular DNA, and so we know what is double standard circular DNA. That is, it will be like this. So the DNA will be like this, so which is in the circular form. Okay. And then sing, it is single standard. So it is single standard. And the option C, it is a double standard linear DNA. So linear DNA is something like this, right? Okay, no conclusion can be drawn. Fine. So now let's apply the Chergaff's rule here. Okay, so the Chergaff's rule is A plus T will be equal to G plus C. Okay. So always A will be equal to T and G will be equal to C. Okay. Now by A by T is going to be 1 and G by C is going to be 1. Fine. So just apply the uh, percentage of A and T here. So A is about 29 and T is about 17 which is not going to be equal to 1 and here G is 17 and C is 32. Again, it is not going to equal to 1. So hence, we can conclude that it is a single standard DNA. Okay, if it is a double standard DNA, so the uh, A and T and G and C is going to be equal. Right, so here the correct option is B. It is a single standard DNA. Fine. So the next question is about which of the following or the function of RDNA? Okay. So we already know that DNA is going to carry the information, okay, to the protein. Sorry, RNA is going to carry the information to the protein, right? So from the DNA, RNA is formed. So this is the basic thing. Let's read the option first. Option A, it carries a, of genetic information from DNA to ribosomes synthesizing polypeptides. So polypeptides is which is nothing but it's amino acid. So if a group of amino acid is formed then it is called as a polypeptides which is nothing but proteins. Okay fine. Let's see the B option. It carries amino acids to ribosomes. Actually the amino acids are carried by tRNA actually. Okay. So now the option B is wrong. Option C, it is a constituent 
component of ribosomes so actually this rna is not the constituent component of ribosomes the constituent of ribosomes are rna and proteins both this rna and protein okay so but rna is not a constituent of components of ribosomes by itself okay so it will be combining with the proteins always okay so now this is also wrong so the correct option is option a so it is a carrier of genetic information from dna to the ribosome synthesizing polypeptides so the next question is so if meselson and stark experiment is continued for four generation in bacteria the ratio of n15 by n15 okay some ratios have been given containing dna in the fourth generation would be so it is uh, one of the breaking study that provides by the dna that the dna is semi conservative so it, should, it is one of the break, breakthrough so now this dna is semi conservative okay so this is the experiment called meselson and stark experiments so what they did you know they labeled bacteria that is e coli dna using isotope of nitrogen okay so they labeled let me write here labeled bacterial dna so using the isotope of nitrogen that is n15 and n14 okay so these are the two isotopes so first of all they labeled it and i mean they grown that culture that e coli culture in now so the culture is heavy isotope okay that is heavy isotope heavy fine so after that so first they cultured here and second they culture it in the normal so this is normal fine so when it we cultured in this medium for the first time will change the color of that first of all the dna will be like this fine right? that is n15 okay so later that they cultured in n14 so actually this thing is they have taken the dna of the bacteria and they uh, cultured okay it in the n15 medium okay so when we cultured that this in the uh, nh15 medium so it will be like this it is a heavy isotope okay so for our reference i have drawn this in the red color okay so after that so they are taking this uh, dna to this next culture okay so when it is grown in this n14 it will be like this okay so this blue color is n14 and this red color is n15 so actually this became hybrid so this is the hybrid because of the replication okay so after this this is the generation 1 see the question again containing the dna in the fourth generation okay so now here we have found only first generation we have to found what is there in the fourth generation now let's draw the generation 2 so in the generation 2 each dna is going to get replicated fine so one red strand will be here and here one red strand will be here actually this generation 2 is also cultured in the n14 medium okay so that's why we are getting this okay so we have drawn the generation 2 now let's draw the generation 3 so this is generation 2 so this is going to be the generation 3 so here 
one red stand going to be here and another red stand is going to be here. So after this, everything is going to be the blue. That is N14. Okay, so we have drawn the generation 3 right now. So this is the generation 3. So now let's draw the generation 4. So that's the they have asked in the question. So we have to be very careful. Okay. So one red stand is going to be here. And one red stand is going to be here. And finally, everything will be blue. Okay. Now we have found the fourth generation. Fine. Okay. So what are the ratios they have asked? So they have asked N15 by N15 is to N15 by N14 and finally N14 N14 okay so first we have find out uh, which is N15 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 N14 so here one red stand and one blue stand is there right so this is actually it consists of N15 and also N14 so so this is the N14 and 15 and then this two blue stands is N14 and N14 Okay, so in the fourth generation, we are not having this heavy isotope, right? So, we have to write zero here. Okay, so how many N15 and N14 uh, DNA stands are there? So, one is here and one is here. Only two are there. And finally, so N14 and N14, how many? So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So finally, 14 is there. So when we simplify this, we can get the ratio. Okay. So 0 is to 1 is to 7. So the correct option is D. Okay. So this is how we have to find the generation of the DNA. Actually, this is one of the very uh, important experiment uh, to say that DNA is a semi-conservative. Okay, so this is the experiment called Messelson and Stark experiment. Fine. So these two scientists took the uh, E. coli DNA, E. coli bacteria. Okay, they cultured this in the heavy isotope. Okay, after the heavy isotope, they have cultured that in the normal nitrogen isotope. Okay, so in that medium, we got the generation 1 and this is the generation 2 and this is the generation 3. So, this is 2 and 3 and this is the 4. Fine. So, this is how we got the generations. We will move to the next question. A DNA replication. Okay. So, discontinuous uh, synthesis of DNA occurs in one stand. Okay. Because. So, actually... Uh, if you remember in the DNA replication, we'll be getting the replication fork. So we'll be getting the replication fork. And this is from 5 dash to 3 dash and 3 dash to 5 dash. So here, the primer, RNA primer will attach here and it will start synthesizing a new stand that is, that is 5 dash to 3 dash. So actually this will... This primer will always start from 5 dash stand. 
okay so here also the primer will attach here okay and it will start synthesizing a new strand in this direction okay so here again we'll be getting from 5 dash to 3 dash fine so this is the continuous strand and this is the this continuous strand because some two or three primers will attach here and finally the enzyme ligase will attach the full stand continuously without any gap. So that's why it is called as a discontinuous stand. Okay, fine. Let's see the option. DNA molecule being synthesized is very long. No. So only in the, con I mean, continuous synthesis will be happening in the 5 dash to 3 dash direction only. So not in the discontinuous synthesis. Okay. So this is called as a Okasaki fragment, right? So it is not going to happen in the Okasaki fragment. So it is not going to, since this is very long, it is going to be small. So now this option is wrong. See the second option. DNA dependent DNA polymerase catalyzes polymerization only in one direction. Yes. So when the primer is get attached, it, it is a small state. I mean, store small nucleotides of RNA, right? So when it is come and attached, again, one enzyme is going to come and attach here. That is called as a DNA polymerase. So obviously, this is this is going to catalyze only from 5 dash to 3 dash direction. Okay, the option B is right. Okay, it is more efficient process. No, actually, this discontinuous synthesis is a not that much efficient. Okay. DNA ligase joins the short stretches of DNA. Yes, that is also right. So, but the question is, they have asked only in the discontinuous synthesis of DNA occurs in one stand, right? So, they have asked reason for that alone, okay? So, the correct reason is DNA-dependent DNA polymerase catalyzes polymerization only in one direction. So, the option B is correct, okay? Coming to the next question, who among us the following scientists had no contribution in the development of the double helix model for the structure of DNA? Okay, so we have already know about the structure. We have already read a lot of things about the structure of the DNA. Okay, let's see the scientist name. So the option A, uh, Franklin and Wil Wilkins. Okay, so this two scientists actually they have uh, took x-ray diffraction picture of the crystalline dna okay then coming to the chargaff so actually he found only the chargaff's rule that is a plus g is equal to t plus c okay then messelson and stark so he is the uh, scientist who tried to prove and he proved that dna is a semi-conservative form Right, so he will be coming under DNA replication. So in the question, they have asked about the structure only. Right, so this two scientists or found the X-ray diffraction pattern of the DNA and he found the Chergaff's rule that A plus G is equal to T plus C. So you have to be very careful with the question. Who among us the following scientists had no contribution? Okay. So, this A, B and C, that is Franklin, Wilkins and Chargaff has contributed something for the structure of the DNA. So, he is the only scientist that hasn't contributed on the structure, but he proved that DNA is a semi-conservative. Fine. So, here the option D is correct. So coming to the next question, DNA is a polymer of nucleotide which are linked to each other by 3 dash to 5 dash phosphodiester bond, okay, to prevent polymerization, okay, of nucleotides, which of the following modification would you choose, okay. So we know that phosphate group is a backbone of the DNA structure, okay, phosphate bond. If we want to prevent that, what we have to modify okay so now option a 
replace purines with pyrimidines no so actually if it is a sugar phosphate will be attached there and uh, phosphate it will be coming there and here the purines and pyrimidines a or t or g or c is going to attach here right with the pento sugar so the option a is wrong fine remove or replace oh group in deoxyribose okay so because for example if it is a deoxyribose sugar here the oh group will be there so with the help of this oh group only this phosphate will get attached so this is the 1 dash 2 dash and 3 dash position okay let's see the next option remove or replace 2 dash oh group with some other group in deoxyribose no okay both b and c so actually the correct option is b okay if we remove or replace this oh group which is in the 3 dash position we can prevent the polymerization of the nucleotides okay so the correct option is b coming to the next question the enzyme DNA dependent RNA polymerase catalyzes the polymerization reaction in yes, we know that. We have already know about it. So this is 3 dash to 5 dash. Okay. Now actually, first of all, there will be the primer will get attached. Okay. Here, DNA polymerase is going to get attached. It is only going to synthesize the new stand from 5 dash to 3 dash. So now, here the correct option is A. Okay, so this is not going to attach somewhere here and it is going to come like this. So the correct option is A. The next question is the process of copying genetic information from one stand to one strand of DNA to RNA is termed as. So we know that DNA and then RNA and protein. Fine. We have already read this in central dogma, right? Of molecular biology. This is replication. And this the genetic information carrying from DNA to RNA, this process is called as transcription. And from DNA to the protein, it is called as a translation. Okay. So here, the correct option is B. DNA replication takes place at dash phase of the cell cycle. So, we already know about the cell cycle, right? So, this is G1 and this is yes, G2 and YAM. Here, G0 phase will be there. Fine. So, M phase, there will be some four phases, whether it may be what is that? Mitosis or meiosis. Okay, fine. So when we see that cell cycle here, so in the G1, the chromosome, the chromatin will be like this. And in the yes phase, it will get doubled. Right. So this process is called replication. Okay. So now the correct option is it is going to happen in the yes phase. That is synthesis phase. So coming to the next question, other than DNA polymerase, which are the enzymes involved in DNA synthesis? So which means uh, DNA replication, synthesis in the sense DNA replication. So we have already read about lots and lots of enzymes, right? So yes, option A, topoisomerase. Yes, it is involved in the DNA replication, which means when the replication focus formed, the stands will get tensed. So, to release the stance, I mean, to release the tension of the stance, this topoisomerase is involved. And then, coming to the helicase. 
it is used to unwind the dna actually the dna will be like this right to form the replication fork so this helicase is in what and then rna primase okay for the synthesis okay it is used for synthesis obviously so all these three enzymes is also involved with the dna polymerase so the option d is correct select the correct match of enzyme with its related functions okay dna polymerase synthesis stands that is right and helicase so we have already seen this right it is used for the unwinding that is also right and ligase joins together short dna segments yes so if we see the okazaki fragments so the dna stands will be like this right so yes okay so this is the discontinuous stands called okazaki fragments so to join this this ligase is used fine so all of these are correct okay first experimental proof for semi conservative dna replication was shown in okay so actually i have already told you that this semi conservative model was uh, first of all uh, shown by the scientists called messelson and star okay so these are the scientists proved that this is the semi conservative model of dna okay so i have already told you that they have make this in the bacteria that is e coli okay so here the correct option is b so the next question is about which of the following phenomena was experimentally proved by messelson stack yes so we don't want to think about it if the name comes messelson stack it is a semi conservative dna replication okay so now the next thing to prove that dna is the genetic material which radioactive isotope were used by hershey and chase in experiments okay so these are the two scientists named hershey and chase they proved that dna is a genetic material okay so they have used two isotopes i'll explain this experiment now so in this hershian chase they took the bacteriophage okay so it is the virus which will be infecting the bacteria okay it will be like this okay fine so they took two isotopes that is yes 35 and let me draw the one more bacteriophage fine so this is phosphate 32 okay so this sulfur 35 is used to label the protein coat of this bacteriophage actually this dna is present here okay so this will be labeled in the protein code this is the protein code okay so that's why i have drawn little bit thick so this is the protein code this phosphate is labeled in the genetic material that is in the dna fine so it is labeled here okay or let me change the color of this i'll have the blue here fine so it is isotope and here let me draw the red color okay this is isotope so we got colors in the protein coat so this is the protein coat and this is the dna is labeled so now we are making it to infect in a bacteria fine so this is the bacteria bacterial cell fine so now it is coming and is infecting when it is infecting 
it is going to come and sit here. Okay. It is going to come and sit there and it is going to pass this DNA alone inside the bacteria. So when we take that, again this is going to come and sit. Again it is going to insert only the DNA. Okay. So now in this one, this two okay so in this one the dna is quite normal it is not isotope so from this we can find that only the bacteriophage is injecting the dna not this protein coat okay from this two second thing we can find that dna is going to get inside the it is going to infect the other organisms see actually they have they are trying to prove that uh, that DNA is a genetic material and it is passing from one organism to the other organism and from the one generation to the other generation. For that, they are making an experiment with the bacteriophage. Okay, this bacteriophage is a virus which is used to infect the bacteria. Okay, so this bacteria have this bacteriophage has only two parts. That is protein coat. So that is the outer part. So this is one part and next part is DNA. Fine. So only two parts are there in this bacteriophage. So first thing, they are taking two bacteriophages. So in one bacteriophage, they are uh, making the isotope, okay, uh, in the protein coat. Okay, they are labeling the protein coat and in the next bacteriophage, they are labeling the DNA. Okay, so that finally we can find which is getting inside to the organism so this is the organism okay so it is the it this is the organism which is infected by the bacteriophage so when we isolate the dna from this two in the first bacteriophage the dna is quite normal and in the second bacteriophage it is isotoped with the phosphate okay so the second bacteriophage from the second bacteriophage we can get the isotope that is labeled DNA. So hence they proved that DNA is a genetic material. So here what are the isotopes used? That is phosphate 32 and sulfur 35. So here the option B is correct.